right, welcome back to Orange Peelers. Bit of a mishap, but we're getting going now. <laughs> one of the great weeks of football, Zane, one of the great weekends. Uh, uh, interesting games, some surprises, but as yeah. a South fan, it's a bit <laughs> of a nerve-wracking time. You know, yeah. scared, nervous, shocked, disappointed, a lot of words to describe it. I feel like I'm feeling the exact opposite at the moment. You know, super optimistic. We got the two points against the bye. You did. We come out rolling. We play the tough Knights. Tough game, wasn't it? Tough one, tough one. I, I saw little, I don't know if you call it rumours, but I guess like match reports saying that the bye actually won 100-0. Really? I don't know if you saw those reports. Oh, gosh. But there was a bit, bit of word <laughs> getting around that the bye had been us, which got me a bit worried. I actually put my house on the bye. I don't know if you saw that on my t- weekly TikTok video. <laughs> put your house on the bye. And, of course, the Bulldogs end up winning the one week I tip yeah. against them. No change to the points differential. <laughs> no either. change yeah. to the points differential. Strange. But, you know, you just take the two points and you move on to next week. Well, Taking it we one go. week at a time. The final run is on. Trust me. We might take the south spot in the top eight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's get point, yeah. let's rip straight into the round that was. Obviously, Warriors and Dragons was the first game. Yes. And one of the – I think it was the highest scoring game. It was. Of the weekend. And there were some high scoring ones. It was. I really wish I went to this game now. Yeah. And like as a Wollongong local, I, this would have been a fun game to go to. Yeah, Just 100%. Looking, when I was like watching like this on TV, I couldn't believe how many Warriors supporters were there. Yeah. I like, well, never knew they had this. I moment. remember saying the other week, because obviously like I, I was surprised as well. And when I was at Accor for the Bulldogs Warriors game, oh... <laughs> I just noticed the tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Zane, talk me through the tattoo. Oh, the tattoo, Show, yeah. show the it camera. Was home done. You probably can't see it very well, so it needs to be improved, obviously, but I had a friend do it. <laughs> what does it stand for? South Sydney Till I Die, and I'm planning on getting the Rabbits logo under it and Premier's 2023. Zane's, Zane's out of Reynolds now. <laughs> oh, yeah, getting to that point. Um, as I was saying, the Warriors-Bulldogs game at Arcor Stadium, I was surprised at how many Warriors fans were at that game. Oh, yeah. And so, like... Where have they come from? Well, that's like would a, they have this many people at a game if they were going if they were well, weren't yeah. in the top eight? Are they bandwagoners? And you like I'm not going to stereotype all of the Warriors fans because I know for a fact that not every Warriors fan oh, is a bandwagon. Yeah. But there's definitely and every team has bandwagon fans and like whatever that's yeah. sports. But there are I think Warriors have a larger number of bandwagon fans than most or all other mm, clubs. All Islanders are just jumping on yeah. them now. Especially like the, I think the Kiwis in Australia who don't really follow it. Yeah. They see, you know, New Zealand going well and they're like, oh yeah, that's my team. <laughs> I work at League and Legends in Fig Tree and I worked on Friday before the game and we've never sold that much Warriors merch. We sold out. Really? Sold out of beanies and scarves because everyone was coming in and buying it. And going to the game And afterwards. then going to the game. Yeah. There was actually a Roosters fit. No, a Broncos fan came in and bought a Warriors scarf because he was going to the game and said he hates the Dragons that much that he just wanted to wear the <laughs> other team's merch. So I thought well, that was a bit, there we go. bit random. But, yeah, back to the game. What, like, what did you make of it? Obviously, the Warriors towed up the Dragons. We I both- don't think, like, they were <laughs> exceptional, the Warriors. Like, mm. And they even admitted they still... A lot of things they wanted to improve on from that game, but yeah. the Dragons were just pathetic. Yeah. Just terrible. And... My most impressive player of the round is from this game. Yeah. I did have my most disappointing player, player from this game until the Rabbitohs yeah. played, obviously. <laughs> player of the round. There's two. There's another one from the Rabbitohs game I wanted to go with, but I've gone with, it has to be Dallin Martinez. Zel- Zelesnia. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'm going to circle. And my second place one was Scott Drinkwater, yeah, I was gonna but say, we'll get to him soon. I'm, I'm going to circle back to player of the round later, but it was between Dallin and then yeah. one or two others. I thought Dallin... You know, four tries, you have to give it to Ex-Bulldogs him. legend. Yeah. Four, he, it's his first career hat-trick and then he decided one was, uh, three wasn't enough. Went the fourth. How about his hair as well? Oh, yeah. He's got... The perm. He's, yeah, it's the good perm. haircut, isn't it? <laughs> it's a beautiful Sick. haircut. And he's found confidence and as much as it hurts seeing, you know, an ex-Bulldogs player killing it, it's, it is good to see at the same time because he, he was a good player before he came to us and he just didn't live up to expectations. And I feel it wasn't his fault. Yeah. Huh. And obviously he's showing that he's still got good footy in him. Mm, and He's killing it. Did he play for New Zealand in the World Cup? I think he might have. Because he, he, played... he used to captain him. Years I think ago he, he did was actually, captain. yeah. I was going to say, if he didn't, like he's knocking on the door to yeah, return to the Surely side. Surely he yeah. plays. Because this isn't the first good game he's had. Like he's been in form, but he's just finally reaping the rewards of his form. Yeah. On the I other... have him in my fantasy team as well, by the way. Yeah. Oh, so how many like, points did he 93. get? 93. I think it's the high scorer. Yeah, probably. I mean, you score four tries, you're going to be up there. (laughs) What about the Dragons on the flip side? That was just dreadful from their defense, especially in the first half. was just (laughs) awful. And 
I think we'll talk about my most disappointing player. Well, it's not from this game, but there were two options from this game that I were going to go with. First half, Michaeli Ravalara. Mm. Then the second half, the other winger, Matt Fina. Yeah. They were just awful in defence. Absolutely yeah. terrible. And there was that try that was taken off the Warriors where you know, Ravalara ran out, but, you know, he has to do his dive. So mm. the try got taken yeah. off. But defensively, the wingers were shocking for the Dragons. Do you think the, terrible. the whole, I guess, the inside noise and the external noise around the Ben, ben Hunt, Hunt situation, do that affected them? I think it did. Ben Hunt's brave for going to the press conference after yeah, that game. Yeah, good on him. Yeah. Good on him. I just, like, I didn't, like, the Dragons obviously were bad, but I didn't think they were that much worse compared to their past performances. Oh. I just thought it was almost, know. like, it was a little bit worse, yeah, but, but I see, thought it was just With the most Dragons' well. performances this year, they haven't been pumped. Like, they've yeah. lost in close games, apart from the Sharks game and this one, obviously. Yeah. I think they just, Warriors just exposed them quite well. Oh, yeah. Like, when they realised Dallin was... They just looked like such a happy tries. team, the Warriors. The Warriors. Oh, yeah. Hey. Like, Johnson looks happy. Nickel Klukslight like, looks happy. With Tenny Zolesniak, they're, Jackson they're, Ford. And they're just finally Vanilla playing Blake. their own brand of footy. Yeah. Which is exactly what... They've always needed to. And know. I think I they like can make the eight this year, and I think they will. And what I remember are they a few weeks ago when we had Fred on, I had them predicted in fifth. <laughs> yeah. And, you and I'm, I'm, I'm you happy to disagree with that. I'm at happy the time. to sit here and say I reckon they get that a home I final. thought you were an idiot for, for putting them that high. I thought eight. I thought like they'd make still the see eight, a drop. but not I can fifth. still see an eighth place finish. I can now see them coming like on the current ladder as well. They've got a bunch of games at home. Yeah. Like they could be top four even, but yeah. I, I just want them fifth just so they can get a home final because I think it would be yeah. awesome to see. I saw Emilio did on his story like literally two hours ago, not even. He did like a ladder prediction. I think the NRL must oh, have put up something. And he yeah. had Warriors in first place. Yeah, and he had dogs in the top. Fourth, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you reckon Warriors can creep into a minor premiership? Oh, I don't think they can go that far, but it, it would be awesome to see. I, don't think, I think cool top four is in the question. Realistic four. It's yeah. realistic. So, yeah, shout out to the Waz. Chee-hoo, Zane. Chee-hoo. Chee-hoo. <laughs> um, game number two was another toweling up. This time it was the Eels toweling up. Annihilating. The, the, the sea rivals. 42 to the four in the first half. I'd finished work with 10 minutes to go in that first half and check yeah. the score. Yeah. And I messaged you as well. I'm like, what is going yeah. on here? And I'm just like, what's going wrong for the Dolphins? Like, honestly. They've just fallen off a cliff. This was the Dolphins we expected preseason. Yeah. See in the year. They yeah. have just been awful. They, you know, they fixed it up in the second half and they got yeah. a big game this week. Their second half was yeah. fine. That's the weird it was bit. Fine, That's the almost concerning bit. But what else concerned me is that Wayne Bennett in the press conference didn't look concerned at all. Yeah, but that's Wayne Bennett. He like, knows what he's doing. He's like, oh, we'll go on the next week. I'm like, well, I think Wayne Bennett, he had knows. 58 last week against Manly, then this week they've 42 in the first half. Like, they it's been yeah. terrible. And the them. Warriors game, they got towed up oh, as yeah. well the week before. Like, it's three I weeks can, in a like, row. Realistically, they can finish bottom four still. Yeah. The ladder's close enough. Mm. But I feel like Wayne knows that all you have to do to play finals is make the eight, obviously. Yeah, he knows and that. And he's comfortable playing, like, outside of the I top I can still score world where they finish in the eight as yeah, well. Yeah, 100%. And I think that's what Wayne Bennett can see as well. Because, like, I, I know we did our updated ladder <laughs> prediction, but it's always, obviously always changing every few weeks. If we had done the updated ladder prediction just a week later, yeah, mine yeah. would have been completely different. Same. Like, completely now I've different. Got, I think Gold Coast can make the eight. Yeah. I think Warriors, you know, I still have them in the same sort of position. But yeah. I think Sharks are going to finish a lot lower than yeah. what people expect. So, you know, there's a lot of changes that I think Parramatta will make the eight as well. Yeah. But I think I had them in my uh, yeah, anyway. I, I think remember. Cowboys can make a push. Like, mm. it's changed teams, how, hasn't it? How about those Eels? What a they're f- flying. I'm willing to, they're threats. They can win the cup. 100%. Comp. They can win the cup. I think the, I said this to someone in a comment on the weekend. I said the round 27 buy. Is, is the vital biggest thing ever for the Eels. Not even, not even because it's a bonus two points to get them into the eight, because their entire team gets to rest the week before the yeah. finals, and then if they can push into top four, they just need three big games from the comp, the or the even NRL outside the four, they need four I'm big just being games. Selfish, but if only the NRL had given South the round twenty-seven by, <laughs> we round 26. round twenty-six. Like so it, you know, we got a big game, and then we got finals. Like so. how huge is a round twenty-seven by? It's huge, isn't it? I think everyone because it's so far away that nobody's thinking about it. When we get there, everyone's going to be like, "What? This is completely unfair." Because mm. they get to rest their entire team and then have a big final. They're scary, run. the Eels. They're and this is me. keep in mind they've played the last four weeks, two games without Moses. No, one no, game, the, one, one or game. two without Moses, and no. three. Without, without Hodgson and without Brown. Yeah. And they've had like a bunch of forwards out for a lot and of those games too. they better without them as well, mm. haven't they? 
It's like it is insane, and they they had found form before the Bulldogs game, but I think that's when it really started. They really started finding form when they beat South that game. That's where since then they've looked incredible. Yeah, they had that loss on Magic Round. They had that loss to the Raiders the week after. I think yeah, the week after that's when they played South. So I don't think they've lost since then, have they? No, not since the South. They won five in a row. Yeah, so no, which is the second only the second time ever. No, sorry, not ever. The second time since Arthur took over as coach. Which is like going back quite a while that they've put in put five in yeah. a row together. Wow. The second time. Like they don't do it often. They're more consistent than what they were last year. Yeah. This year. I just it it is scary because the thing is at the start of the season when they were dropping games, I remember coming in here every week and we'd say the same thing every week. They lost, but they were competitive. Yeah. And so when you look back at their losses now, it's like, well, they were actually competitive in all those games. And now they're winning those games. And they're winning games by big margins. Mm. So they've really put it together. Yeah, they have. And especially with that round 27 bye, they, they're a threat. In they my are opinion. a threat to win the game. Even outside of the top four. Yeah, absolutely. To be honest. Because they can beat those top four sides. Yeah. And like, it's, it's funny because I, I know a lot of people were writing them off. Early in the Including season, me I had him nice. Yeah, and I was, and I was like, I'm not going to write them off, but it, like, it isn't looking good. But I, I just was always like, because of how tight the comp is, you just can't rule barely anyone out. And I think the Eels are proving, like, we, the Bulldogs were above the Eels earlier in the year. Yeah, I, know. I remember we were sitting in a like any ones, and we were like, I know you, like, you were sort of going, oh, like, I don't know if the Bulldogs can make it. And I was in denial because yeah. I sort of felt the same way. But they they, they were equal with the Eels. Yeah, I know they were. And I remember saying, like, the Eels are capable. Why aren't the Bulldogs? And, like, the Eels were capable. Yeah. And they're there now. Why couldn't the Bulldogs do that? But it's just they're insane just, how close it I is. I just think they're very hungry. You know, 38 mm. years without anything to eat. <laughs> like, I just think they're a team to beat this final series. Yeah. You gotta, like, people are underestimating them a lot. Yeah. A lot. I, I think, like, bro, I think... I want to give a shout out to Brendan Hans, I give the him, hooker. Yeah, I give him a better chance of winning than the Broncos or the Rabbitohs. Huge. Hmm. Yeah, wow. You know who the other team I think is above him? Who? Penrith. Pen- That's yeah, it. I yeah. have him second. Above Storm as well? Yes. Yeah, I, they can beat Storm. We've seen that for they the can, past few They can years. beat Panthers. They beat Panthers. They can as well, yeah. You're right. That's the thing. Like I they, I said, I think, one or two weeks ago, like, they're being so slept on. They are. And they like... I, I think it's, everyone's stopping sleeping on them now because yeah, everyone's waking pulled, up to them. They've they've just, when I the watch 80. that Dolphins game, that's when I open my eyes. I'm like, yeah. whoa. But yeah, like, let's let's stop sleeping on the Eels, please, because like they are. And I, I and I've just I haven't said all year that they get they're a threat, but I haven't written them off because I'm like it's so close. Two weeks and the ladder can be completely different. Mm. Even one week and the ladder can be completely yeah, different. Eels are just everyone keeps forgetting how close it is, and so. The Eels, like, they can make top four. They can. They can go deep. So it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. Eels. I wonder what their run home is like. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. You know, they had tough games to start the year, so yeah, it has to be. Yeah, that's the thing, hey. And I, as, I, as I've said, like, a million times, just to – like, they've got to buy this so week. I'll have a look. They've got <clears> – I just – like, I can't stress – So they got the buy this week, then they got the Warriors. At and home. The, at home. Then they got the Titans at home. Cowboys yeah. away. Melbourne in Melbourne. If the, they beat the Dragons, the Broncos, the Roosters, the Panthers, then the bye in round 27. So they got reasonably tough end to the year, to if, be honest with you. If they beat, though, if they beat Titans, Cowboys, and Warriors in the next three weeks, that, like, is wins against teams around them. And so they basically count for double. Yeah. So, like, that's a huge three weeks. If they go three from three, I'd almost lock them into the finals. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty much close to yeah. locking them in now. And as, as I've said so many times, like, I can't stress enough how important that round 27 buy is going to be. Like, I literally think that buy can win them the comp. You reckon? Yeah. Whoa. Because that's like it's – we've seen like Panthers every year they rest their players, Storm every year they rest their players, and it gives such a big boost, you know, all the players, they get a week off, they get to rest. And we've seen this year how good teams are after the buy. Like teams have such a good record the game after the buy. Oh, yeah. And so I really do think – that that buy is going to yeah, be most so team, huge. Most teams do have yeah. a record not after all, the buy. Yeah. Yeah, not, not all teams, not but all like teams. not all teams. But there's there's more more teams win than they lose, like easily. So yeah, first firstly or lastly, don't sleep on the eels, but don't sleep on that round twenty seven buy either. Mark my words. Yeah. It's um, going to be so interesting. The end of the year. It's going to be so good. excited for it though. Even if Rabbitohs aren't there. 
No, if they're not there, then I'll be, I'll be done with league for the year. If they miss the eight, I'm finished with rugby league. I'll tell you who's honestly. not missing the eight. The Penrith Panthers. Not at all. They beat the Knights by eight points <laughs> out at Penrith. Such they a, had none of their origin a, players play. It was a very boring game. Yeah. I thought Dane Gagai had a shocker. And he's lucky to not be my most disappointing player. Yeah. He's hurt himself now. So yeah. has some time off, but he had a terrible game, I thought. I th- I think Christian Welsh summed it up the best in his press conference. Oh, yeah, I, saw that. I think he is summed that, it up the best. How, how did they, they lose this game? <laughs> like, how did they lose? The Panthers had nobody. They didn't, but the Knights just, I don't know. Like, they're just strange. Like, they can cling together, like, good patches here and there. And it's not like they got flogged. They were in the game. Mm. And this is what I say every single week. It just shows that how good Penrith's reserve grade side is, actually. Plus, like, but, and I know Christian Welsh said that Panthers had nobody, but they didn't have nobody. They had Dill Edwards. James Fisher, Harris, yeah. Leota, you know they had Spencer Lenu experience in their side. Yeah. They had like they had enough players obviously to get the job done. Tyrone t- Peachy was I was about good. to say Tyrone Peachy isn't he different when he's in a Panthers yeah. jersey? I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's like Benji Marshall when he's in a Tigers jersey. Like he can go to all the other clubs and be terrible, and then he goes back <laughs> to Tigers and he's all right. Like yeah. some players just they're only good at one club, and, and that's, that's Tyrone, Tyrone Peachy. Peachy. Yeah. That's Tyron Possible Peachy. origin call up, call up. You know, he's been he there has, before. He's been there before. He's got a bit of experience. They yeah. need centers. They do. Yeah. <laughs> I think they definitely need yeah, centers. Combinations. Combinations the key. Combination. Maybe play him at halfback. Possibly. <laughs> I think I can't see him playing center for New South Wales. No, I, I thought think, Damien Cook did too good to get dropped. <laughs> I don't think he's anywhere near the New South Wales squad to tell you the I'll truth. Tell you what, we probably should have done a bit of an origin review, but oh well. Mm. I don't, oh, don't want to talk that. about it. I don't want to talk about no, it. I can't. I'm just filthy <laughs> another team that were missing a couple of origin players particularly Cameron Munster with Caxtonitis the yeah. Storm they beat Manly Manly were good in this game until about you know half an hour to go they, they put up a apart. fight especially in the first half I was very surprised I thought Storm were going to put 40 on them you reckon I thought game. Storm were going to pump uh, I didn't think like after the Parramatta loss they'd let that slide Manly. Pat Manly yeah. yeah fair. like I knew they'd bounce back I was just worried about them without Turbo yeah, I know. To be honest. I think they're going to learn to play without him. I think they're going to have to learn yeah, to well, play yeah, without him. <laughs> I think, you know, they're, they're just so inconsistent, aren't they, Manly? Yeah. Like, you know, they won the preseason challenge. They started the year off <laughs> reasonably well. And, yeah. You know, everyone's like, oh, Manly look really good this year, but it just hasn't worked out, has it? Yeah. And uh, see some of the signings they've made this week. Luke uh, Brooks. Oh, no. What do you reckon? Ends up at Manly, hasn't What do you he? think of that? I like it. I you think, like I it. think it's the good signing for Manly. Yeah. I just think other Cherry Evans, if he's got it, it could really turn his career around. But, so, see, when I look at it just Cherry Evans and Brooks, I'm like, that's like that's a pretty good half pairing, to be honest. But what happens to either. Schuster? What I, happens to Schuster? I think he's either going to play back row. Yeah, and because he's signed a three-year extension now. I think they're preparing for when Cherry Evans moves on. Yeah. Or do you have Cherry Evans? Do you reckon they've told Schuster... head up to Gold Coast. Do you reckon they've told Schuster he's got to have just one year in the back row and then Cherry retires? Yeah, I reckon they've promised him something. Because I I think Cherry retires at the end of next year. You reckon end of next year? And so... There's rumours saying he might retire this year. Yeah. But I don't think that's happening. Yeah, no, I don't think so. But it is interesting. Like, they just signed Cooper Johns and Jake Arthur. Jackson Paulo. Yeah, it's... Like, Who else did they well, sign? Well, they, they signed, signed Jackson Paul at the same time as Brooks, but yeah. I mean, they'd already oh, yeah. this year signed Cooper Johnson, Jake Arthur. I'm pretty sure they signed someone else. Yeah, they did. Um, Talao. Yeah, Talao. Talao. I, I think there was another person. No, there was only three. I think there was another person no. they've done recently, but yeah. Maybe recently, but on the day of Brooks being announced, that only there was three. Because I can picture the graphic in my head that yeah. they posted that up. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Anthony Seabold's cooking. Yeah, well, I don't know yeah. what he's cooking, but he's cooking. Aaron Woods. And he seems very confident recently. as well. Seabold, doesn't yeah. he? I, like, if you look at it as just Brooks and Cherry, I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. But when Cherry moves on, I don't It'll know how Brooks I feel about and Brooks and Schuster. I don't think that's a good combo. I don't think they complement each other at all. <laughs> and I think Schuster, like, surely he's not happy to not be 5'8 when last year he was like, I'm leaving yeah. if I'm not 5'8. He's a and strange then Arthur man. Arthur and Schuster. John's, like, what happens to them as well? Oh, I think they're just depth players. They can't probably. keep both. They won't keep both. Well, They're them. both off contract. But that, like, mm. it's just, it's like a John's very or, interesting John's signing. John's a big one to move. And the other big talking point around it is that Fainu bloke that they've got oh, in yeah, the juniors. That's the name I was thinking of. Who's regarded as the best up and coming half in the comp, who rugby league guru, 
who is infamous for knowing who the good players are, Hopgood, Kodai, a bloke he's called back before anyone knew who they were, mm. Guru said that this kid can be anything. This I don't he remember said his about first Hopgood name as well. He, and like so, this Fainu bloke who apparently is gone now, possibly the Tigers, possibly somewhere else. Like they've lost him as well to get Luke Brooks. Mm. I I find it interesting, and I'm not as I said like. Brooks and Cherry, I think that's a good Haas pairing. But it's beyond that that I don't understand. I think short-term signing, sure, it's good, but not long-term. Long-term for Brooks. Especially, Brooks is only 29. Especially though. losing Fainu. Mm. Well, get, until we see how he goes in the top grade. But you to, know, to their Guru credit, always is Guru point, doesn't miss. Yeah. He does, but dude, like he doesn't miss. Okay, I'm trying to remember what he said about other rookie players and well, see like how he, they're going now. Before Cotter was in the starting 17 hey, What was he like with Cowboys? Lockie Ilias? I don't remember. Yeah, you don't remember. But like, he calls... He calls the big ones. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't put Elias in the same category as Hopgood or Cotter. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're both, like, arguably, like obviously, Hopgood hasn't played Origin, but he's at an Origin level. Mm. And Cotter, Guru came out before Cotter was in the 17 for Cowboys and said he's going to play Origin this year. And everyone laughed at him. Like, I didn't, nobody had even like, heard of Cotter. Last year he said that. Last year he said that Cotter was going to play Origin and nobody had even heard Oof. of Cotter. And he, pl- like, and he obviously he played Origin. Like this is what, and Guru has huge raps on this Fainu kid. So I think like it's going to be a big loss. Then maybe he goes into a garbage <laughs> system and never becomes anything, but it well, is it's just likely, interesting. It's very Seabold, I feel like. To do that. It's a Seabold signing, like signing Aaron Woods, <laughs> yeah. signing uh, Luke Brooks. I don't know what he's thinking. Yeah. I don't just, know what like, he's Like thinking. I get the short-term thinking. Like if, to be is honest, he deliberately trying to like term. sabotage the club or That's whatever? That's what it seems like sometimes. But I think the... They deserve credit for the price they've got Luke's, Luke Brooks at. 400k a year. Because it was 1.6 mil over four years. Mm, so it might big, be it might be more early. Like it might yeah, not be 400 a, a year. dollars but like the Tigers are offering him. Yeah. It's, it's a, a it averages out for, to 400 a year. It's a fair price for Luke Brooks. <clears throat> yeah. I think so. But yeah, that game. You know, Manly, they tried, but they just couldn't hold them out in the end. And yeah, they just didn't score enough points either. But, yeah, they blew their opportunities. Yeah. I feel like that was really, really good evaluation from me. They lose 24 to 6 and I go, oh, they didn't really score enough points. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, they didn't score enough points. Yeah, but they blew <laughs> a lot of opportunities. Yeah, no, man. they did. I thought, I feel like the, it's going to take them some time to adjust without Turbo. Yeah. Because now they've got to go all in on... But I don't think they're like a bottom four side, but I think they're going to be like, you know, ninth, tenth, They can 11th, still compete, like, I feel like. There. But yeah, I don't, I don't see them making the eight, but I think yeah, they can nah. compete. There's a world I remember pre season we wanted to predict what Turbo's injury this year would be. Yeah, yeah he said his first tech. injury. I said elbow, you said he'd do his hamstring again. Yeah. So I guess I'm closer, would you say? Elbow to peck. Well, I think we're guessing what his first injury would be, though, not, not what his season ending injury would be. Well, yeah. But yeah. It, but in terms of like guessing injuries, yeah, an elbow is closer to a peck, I'd say. But yeah. Again, a hamstring's a muscle, peck's a muscle. So. Yeah, elbow's not a muscle. And. It depends how <laughs> it depends how long your arms are. I feel like maybe he has really long long arms, and yeah, short legs, so and maybe I'm close. Yeah, I don't know. know. Oh, I don't know who gets the call it a tie. On one, yeah. Call it a tie. Um, but yeah, I just what about next year? Or should we discuss that one next? What year? do you mean? What's his injury for what, next what's year? What's his next injury going to be? <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to ask you this. Ankles. I'm going to ask you a completely different question. Should he retire? I think one one injury away. Oh, I said that at the start of this year. <laughs> I said he was one season injury, season I ending injury he's away. One more, I, but injury. That, that's what I think. I think he's got one more left, because the positive thing is like this is Peck, and he has done a Peck before, but it's not hamstring. I think if he does his hammy again or anything in his leg again, to be honest, <laughs> like then he's gone. But obviously, it sounds funny saying that it's good that it's a Peck because like it's season ending, but at least it's not something in the leg. And I'm not sure if it's oh, the it's same a, Peck that he did last, last year. year. He, ended yeah, and he's done a peck earlier as well. He's done everything <laughs> except elbow. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, That's I a feel strange, like, strange under I feel like one more, one injury. more injury, away one from more retirement. injury. Oof, gee. He's got to like start thinking about life outside of football. No, he'd definitely have some sort of career though. Well, I'm not saying like he's got to line up a career, but he's got to start thinking about himself and mm. not just thinking about him as a footy player because like it's because these things affect. Yeah, outs. it's not like New South you're Wales only injured in the coach. footy world and you're not injured outside. New South yeah. Wales looking for a coach, so you never know. They're not looking yet, but they will be. <laughs> yeah, they will be. They will be. Um, 
Speaking of New South Wales, Queensland, there was a bit of a Queensland derby on the weekend. Broncos tied What a surprise. I didn't Huge I hardly shock. watch this game, but explain what happened. Mate, I'll tell you what did happened. Did you watch it? I did watch it. Yeah. And this was like upset of the round, I think. Would, Has would to I be. say yeah, yeah. Has to be upset. Easily. Oh no. no. This is a bigger upset this, than I think the game you're thinking of. This no, I'd say this was the second biggest upset. I think I think this one was bigger you're than okay. yeah. Really? Because I think the Cowboys are a better side than the Titans, so. Honestly, I think this was the upset. Of, this wasn't the upset. Of the I think Cowboys in Sydney was a bigger upset. But, you know, each yeah. to their own. <laughs> but, yeah, no, this, like. I watched briefly this game. Like, I turned it on every once in a while, but I wasn't, like, into it. The it, was, time. it was a weird one because the Broncos weren't even that bad. It was just the Titans just kept them out of the game. The Titans for somehow after played 80 coach, minutes. And after their losing coach, their coach you know. midweek out of nowhere. Let's talk about yeah, that. Yeah, what did you think of um Came out of nowhere, that, did it, though? It came I remember out. reading it at school, like, and it was like Clarkie's post on it, so I thought he was just like joking yeah. and messing around. I'm like, wait, oh, Hulbrook's gone. Yeah, it was so. insane. Like, it came out of Des nowhere. Hasler, though. How did they keep that secret? Oh, I don't know. That's what I don't understand. I know they did it pretty quickly. Apparently, Holbrook didn't even know yeah, until they he got him in. How devo would that be? And he tried to plead his case, and they were like, "No, nah, I'm, I'm out. I, yeah, our like mind's gone, made up. You're yeah. gone." I, 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 reading like what he said, yeah, reading like upset. articles, I felt so bad for him. Yeah, I wanted same. to give him a like, hug. Imagine just like showing up just to do your normal day, <laughs> and just being told, "Nah, you're finished." Like he, when he got called into the meeting, he would have had no idea. He wouldn't have been thinking, "Oh, I might get sacked." Like mm. no way. Like obviously, I think he might have thought. Not in that moment, but like at times he might think to himself, oh, if we keep going this way, I'll be under pressure. Well, everyone saw it coming. But in that, I don't he, think in that he moment, was under though, a lot of pressure. But not, it, like not immediately. But yeah, Dez, though. Dez I Hasler. I think this is like a very underrated <laughs> signing. And I think it's the best signing the Titans have ever made in their history. <laughs> That's a big it, call. It is a big, but. Scotty Prince. Oh, I know they've had Prince, but. Aaron Shop. What have they done with him? Yeah, true. What, what hey, the they signed Daly Cherry Evans. They did. That was that a could big have, signing. That could have been big. That mate. was a big signing. That, that was never to be. <laughs> you know, and all the supporters. No, yeah, I, I see. I see what you're saying. It is I a think, big signing. You know, Hulbrook set very the club up very well for the future. They've got good junior systems yeah. there. I know that for a yeah. fact. Very good. Like yeah. their side on paper is very good as well. They've had, and it's half the reason they made this decision because they're putting a big focus you know, on like there's the There's rumours of Ben years. Hunt going there next year. I, I know think, the Dragons have shut it down, but, you know, he still wants out. I think he wants to go. I have a theory, Zane. I have a theory. So obviously you're not allowed to negotiate with Ben Hunt before, or like I was until gonna, what, the yeah. end of next year? Like clubs aren't allowed to talk to him. But any anyway, like I'm allowed to talk to Ben Hunt. I can go up to Ben Hunt and yeah. say, "Oh, you should sign with the Bulldogs." I can say that to him because I'm not tied to the club. Yeah. You know who else could do that? Des Hasler. Yeah. He wasn't tied to any club. I think Hunt knew that Holbrooks. Like he said, he wants a you know definite coach. He doesn't want anyone getting Hunt. sacked. So I think yeah. So I think that's why yeah. the club's done it this quickly. I reckon that they knew Fitler was close to losing his job, and Hasler was rumored to be one. Yeah. So they picked up Hasler as soon as possible after Origin Two. I reckon Hasler's and they Hunt's already spoken to him. And they're like, "Fine, we'll get rid of Hulbrook now, just so there's no, you know, noise that he might lose his job because the pressure is under." They signed a Premiership winner. I think Hunt knows that he's secure at the club. I was thinking something a little bit different. I was going a bit more tinfoil hat. I reckon that Des has, and I don't actually reckon this, but it's a and theory. Actually, sorry for interrupting, but how long has Hasler signed for? I don't three know. Three years. Know. How three. much years do you reckon Ben Hunt has list, left in him? Two to three. Yeah. I just um, reckon this is all set up to I, get Ben Hunt there. My, the theory, and I don't believe this, but it's it's a theory, is that Des Hasler's gone and chatted with Ben Hunt and he said, I'm, I'm in talks to get the Titans deal. How about, like, you, you can agree to terms with me because I'm not the coach. I'm allowed to talk to you. Let's, like, agree with a deal and then I'm going to use – you to leverage me getting the job and then so they sort of come to an agreement That's and then Des Hasler goes well. to the board. I, I don't think this happened. I want to preface that. I don't think this is I how it plays it out, but it's a theory. I think And then Hunt Des Hasler and- goes to the Titans board and he says, you want Ben Hunt? He's agreed to come with me. You have to sign me if you want Hunt. Package deal. I think it's similar yeah. to what I'm thinking. I just think Hunt and Hasler have had something going on with yeah. each other too. And Hunt's, yeah, and Hunt's like, it's not, you can't have Hunt or Hasler. Hunt came out of it's nowhere both or and neither. asked for this release. Yeah. Then a week, like a few days later, Hasler gets to the job. It it's was literally very, the like, same day as all the Hunt news was happening. Yeah. But like, it was like the Ben Hunt stuff happened with them saying, um, you know, that he's not going to 
leave right now. And then 30 minutes later, it was like Holbrook's sack. Yeah. It was insane. Came out of nowhere. But what I like <laughs> about this signing, I think it's the perfect signing for the Gold Coast. Because mm. Des Hassel's sides have always been sides that stay in the fight and just, you know, fight until the end. You would know it when he was at the Dogs. I'd noticed it when he was at Manly. Yep. They very resilient sides. Yep. And what do the Titans really need? Yeah, resilience. resilience. and defence. And that's what yep. Hasler brings. Yeah. I think there's a very bright future ahead for the Titans. And at the end of the day, you look if at... it all goes to plan. You look at, at Hasler's past teams and I think he always has immediate success. So I think he's going to go to the Titans. Because they're they'll a side playing. who should be playing finals with well, that I was going to say... That he'll go to the Titans, they'll start playing finals footy, everything will be sunshine and rainbows, and then he'll just lock everyone up to back-ended contracts, dip, and then the club will be in shambles for the next 20 <laughs> yeah, years. Just you're like right. <laughs> you're right, but I think... He's got the hair for it. <laughs> for the Titans, yeah. <laughs> for the Gold Coast. Yeah. I just can't imagine him in Gold Coast, like, merchandise. Yeah, like. I've been trying to picture it and you can't. <laughs> but, but at the same time, you sort of can, because there's Hasler's like one of those blokes where he doesn't even care what he's wearing or anything, he just wants to coach. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I think, you know, stuff, Preston Campbell, Scott Prince, all that, I think this is the best sign in the time yeah, ever are. made. Huge call. It's huge. It could come back to backfire, <laughs> but as it usually does. On. The Titans have had four coaches in their history. All four have been sacked. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's a graveyard you know, for coaches they're, that I, they're one of two teams in the last 20 years that haven't played in a grand final. Yeah. Only two teams haven't. Worry, um, no dolphins and titans. Oh, not including dolphins. Knights, the other one. Oh, knights, yeah. In the last twenty years, but knights played like in the last twenty-two years. Yeah. Want to extend a little bit, and then you yeah, obviously dolphins, but I wasn't including them. Yeah, so you know, but titans, you know, they are one of the newer clubs, so they got excuses, but still, yeah. they're just. And the other thing I like is that the clubs since twenty nineteen, when they got the spoon, have said this is a new era. We're not going to be accepting finishing fourteenth mm. and all that. So when they finished 13th last year, I know they made the 8 2021 and, you know, they were happy, but and, you know, Hullbrook was pretty safe at that point. When they finished 13th last year, the tight club were like, this is not what we yeah. want. And we want to be moving I up. I think that's why sacking him immediately sends a message because they're in ninth. Yeah, they're and not tight right the tight and standards, ninth is good, but they said, nah, we yeah, want better. You realize they've already had their three buys and they're not even in the eight. Yeah. That's the other problem. Yeah. You know, if they didn't blow those half-time leads, they'd be top four. Yeah. And that's crazy to think. Like, mm. I think the Titans are really underachieving. To their credit, I don't though, think I Hasler think can get it, out it of looks them. like they've sort of patched the second half issues now that Brimson's oh, back. Yeah, the, like they, they have. played 80 I minutes know. in this game. We said that a few times, though, they fixed it. We said that when they beat Manly at Brookie. We're like, oh, they fixed the issues. Wait, but I don't remember that. That was a couple of weeks ago when they. Who'd they beat? And last? it was the Magic Round. I was thinking it was before the Magic Round game when they beat Parramatta. I remember the Tigers game. I was like, when Brimson got returned, I was like, I my memory doesn't go back because I remember far. they beat Manly at I'm not, saying, then I'm not beat, saying we didn't say that. But I'm just saying my memory doesn't go back that far. Then they beat Power in Magic Round, and everyone's yeah. like, okay, they've gotten over the second half yeah, right, yeah. But then I think it happened a few times. I know it happened against the Bunnies as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm still not. But yeah, their last two, their last two games though, they've beat. And the Dogs game the, happened after Dogs, that. Yeah. Eels Magic Round as well. Yeah, and they blew that game. But yeah, they were they were good on the weekend. They, they were. They good. were good on the. They weekend. They defended well, apparently. Their defense was insane. Mm. Was like they were resilient on the weekend. Good to see. It looked like their problems were gone. Yeah, like the way they played on the weekend. Do you reckon they have a side that can win a premiership though? I mean, Even under Des. I mean, you'd assume one day they win a premiership. <laughs> one I day. think we said this last year, last week, but they're just a side that I just can't imagine you can't when they're it. Yeah. I think if anyone's going to win him a premiership, it's probably Dez. Yeah. But the weird thing is they keep building long-term, but then Dez Hasler is a short-term coach in my experience. Mm. Is that why you don't know if he's going to be the right answer? I, I can't think of a more uh, an answer that would be more correct than Dez. But I just think if they're trying to win a premiership in 10 years' yeah, time... He's one of the bigger coaches in the I, game. I don't see Dez Hasler winning them a comp in 10 years' time, but maybe like short-term, they can pull off a miracle and win one. Oh, if they, short-term. If they, if they get Ben Hunt. Oh, if they get Ben Hunt, they're a threat. Mm. I'll say it, you know, and they get their defense and resilience fixed up because they're one of the best attacking teams. Yeah. Their attack is like so good sometimes, but their defense is really what lets them down. I think Dez is a very defensive mindset coach as well. Yeah. I think there's a lot of good things ahead for the Titans, but and then the Broncos. The, I was going to say the Broncos. I, the Reese Walsh situation. Oh, yeah. I was yeah. Gonna say, there's not much to talk about there, but. Well, I said the this Reece the other Walsh week. Scenario. I know Reese Walsh, oh, he wasn't swearing at the ref, but. Come on. What he said. 
As in, come on, you don't think you can say that? Or come on, as in, you don't think he should be punished? No, I'm saying he definitely sets it a ref. Oh, yeah. He's, you can oh, tell he's full of shit. When I he's don't on. know. I, <laughs> I'm i not trying to condone what he said, but based off what's been said and the footage and stuff, I feel like he might have been talk, talking to Carrigan. Well, still, you're talking to your teammate like that. But, that, <laughs> like, I obviously, you shouldn't talk to your teammate like that. But at the same and time... I'm surprised he wasn't sin-binned either. Yeah, well, that's like, what I don't away. understand. I looked up, it reminds me of the Josh Reynolds one. I, that's what I don't understand. Why wasn't he sending? But <laughs> I've said this before. What if Jared Rory Hargrave spoke like that on the field? Yeah. What if he would have been marched straight away. I also think the ref didn't hear exactly what he said, which helped him not be. Mm. But if Jared sending. had said it, he would have heard every word. He would have been marched from the field. It would have got 12 weeks. The front page of the paper would have been Hargrave's disgraceful, should be yeah. suspended the rest of the year, you know. But because it's Reese Walsh, he gets another chance. I know he's got three weeks. How many weeks do you think he should have got? I would have said one week. I thought um, because I would. Four. I want him back for Origin three. The fact that they found him guilty made me think it should have been at least three to four. Mm. And well, I'm that's what cheering, he got, isn't it? He got yeah, three he weeks, got three. Yeah. And I'm cheering as a doggies fan because they've. I was I was spewing at first because I did the math and I was like, we need a four week suspension because then he misses this week, the week after Origin. What does Origin count towards game. it? Yeah. So Origin is counting towards yeah. it, is it? Yeah. Oh, oh. And, and so it was three weeks, but then I went back and looked at it. They have a buy. Okay. And so he misses this week. So that means he returns. And then they have a bye and then misses Origin and then misses the He's returning against game. the Rabbitohs, fired yeah. up, ready to rip yeah. in again. Oh, Which was great. my fear. I was like, great. He the same week Latrell's due to return. Yeah, that'll be fireworks. Because mm. I can it's I read be a shame a, not seeing him at Origin. Can I read them? a quote to you? Do you know Peter Bedell? Oh, yeah, He's like a yeah, New Zealand reporter. This, sorry, not New Zealand, um, Qu- Queensland. Queensland. Yeah. This is what he said today. Reese Walsh has got his medicine for months of puerile bickering with officials and he did himself no favours by turning up to, to the judiciary dressed like Justin Bieber. <laughs> he wanted to make it interesting, did he? Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if there's anyone that hates NRL more than NRL journalists. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially old, good old Buzz. Yeah. Has his agenda against Gus Gould. Yeah. Doesn't think Gould should be the next origin coach. Yeah. Should we talk about that while we're here? I don't really... I, oh, should we just don't think leave so. it for I think just leave another it. time? It makes me too depressed. Oh, yeah. It makes me too depressed talking about Origin. Sorry sorry if you're watching this and you thought we are going to talk about Origin. Nah. Yeah, screw not, that, Jazz. Not today. Oh, especially because it's been so long now since the game. Yeah, I like um, exactly a week say, yeah. today. Yeah, I think we'll do a... After Game 3, we'll do a series review. review. And yeah. we'll talk about it then. We'll talk about yeah. it at some stage, but not yet. Well, let's let's wait for the series to yeah, play out. Yeah, good idea. You, know, you said those might come out and put 80 on Queensland. They could. And then Philip probably keeps his job. So we'll come back <laughs> at, we'll talk about it at the end of the series, I think. We'll yeah. do a special episode. Yeah, for sure. Actually, you know what? Let's get a special guest in. Yeah, why not? I'm, I think I've got one lined up now that, now that my memory's sort of jogging. Pause. All right. <laughs> We've just had a mini discussion. We're not going to lock in a guest. We're not going to promise you guys a guest. A rumor a guest. But we're going to tease a guest. A guest might happen. It might happen. We yeah. might have another guest. And it's not going to be the same guest as last time either. Yeah. We're not getting hectic Fred back on, but we might We'd we may get eventually. A, yeah, though. 100%. Yeah. But I just want to put it out there. We're not bitter against we'll get, him. Yeah, no, because the way you said that, like, yeah. we're not getting him yeah, back. Yeah, no, 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 no. We love hectic Fred. Love him. But my point is that there was a lot of angry people. <laughs> saying that we clickbaited them and that the guest didn't we live did up to the though. standards. We and so did. and so I'm clickbaiting and I'm saying that this <laughs> guest isn't hectic Fred. This guest is somebody else and it might be it might be high profile. It might be high profile. It might be the Ock. You know, yeah, it might be the Ock. It might be Donald Trump. You never know. <laughs> it could be anyone. It might could be, be Peter Valandis. Oh, I imagine it might be Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> Buzz, yeah, you never know. It could be anyone. <laughs> Anyway, let's Paul go. Kent to might make his return. Zane, yeah. let's let's push you into a spiraling pull of depression. Ah. The Cowboys absolutely thumped the Rabbitohs thumped. upset of the week. In my Thumb's opinion, not the word to describe thirty-one it. to six. Annihilate. What, what did you put on your story that you should have received a medal for sitting through that? I think we should have. I now I understand what you dogs and dragons and say, Tigers fans have to suffer you're every to, week. You're what? trying to bloody get a medal after one game. Imagine sitting through that ah. for six years. It was the worst day of my life. How dare they? When I travel two hours up the end back, so four hours in total, play like that. They were pathetic. <laughs> Terrible game. You're saying it's the worst day of your life. Imagine how I feel mm. every week. I'm, I apologise. Now I to understand. My world. Yeah, have some sympathy. Our attack was just nothing. It wasn't there. Just you scored six points. We saw, but it was off a soft try. 
All the tries in this game were reasonably soft, to tell you the truth. And the try was Lockie Elias off yeah, the it <laughs> Mate, honestly, let, I'm going to let you reap in a sec. I'm going to give my take to get that out of the way, and then I'm just going to let you cook. I thought that South Sydney were absolutely shocking in this game. I, were, thought, I thought Cowboys were good, but I think the scoreboard shows more that Rabbitohs were bad than that Cowboys were good. Yep. It was my mistake. And obviously, they were, totally missing, agree. they were missing Latrell, and every week since Latrell got hurt, I've said that they seem a bit reliant on Latrell Mitchell. And once again, are they too reliant on Latrell Mitchell? Maybe they are. But yes. I think even putting that aside, there was a lot of players in this game that should be stepping up, and they Walker, just failed to terrible. do. My most disappointing player of the week, Cody Walker. He had a shocker, an absolute shocker. If you want to talk about Mitch Moses playing himself into an origin jersey, I think we might have just seen Cody Walker play himself out of yeah, a potential in game three. Like, that yeah. was, I don't know if he's under too much pressure or whatever. Since I don't know what is going on, but that was just not a good game from Cody Walker. And my most disappointing player of the Start game is bro. also from the Souths. The Souths, um, the Rabbitohs. The Souths. And it's similar with Latrell Mitchell talking about how Souths can't play without him. Blake Taft. And I love the guy, but he's just, he's just not it. <laughs> we need to change our whole game plan to suit him because we're playing him like he's Latrell Mitchell. Mm. You know, there's a big difference between throwing the ball to Taff than there is to Latrell. Because, yep. <laughs> you know, Taff just slip, seems to slip over every time he steps. I don't know what <laughs> it is, but he just falls to the ground. Does he, he need new footy boots? He does, just doesn't seem to know what he's doing. And whenever Latrell's not, not there, Walker can't play well. Ilias isn't, like, doing well. Cook, he was okay, but, you know... Murray was okay, but I think, you know, he's still a little bit injured. I was so. going to say, it's always hard to judge Campbell players Graham that are backing up though. from origin. Campbell Graham, Kalal Matangi, our two best players. Yeah. Um, and they deserve we, a run next Wednesday night or we, whenever origin is. Yeah, they, they get picked this weekend. Do they? Yeah, picked this weekend and then the Wednesday after. Yeah, they, were, they were outstanding, but my play, actually, I've done my player of the round, but my, this one was very close behind. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut you off because... My player of the round, I feel it's like it's the same my player, second, yeah. Scotty Drinkwater. Drinkwater yeah. He was my player of the now round. Now I've realised watching him live how good he is. <laughs> yeah. He carved us up, Better especially life. down the middle. Down the middle was just outstanding. Yeah. He killed, yeah, especially through the middle, off the 40. And a lot of them were pretty game. like weak defence. Like yeah. Some of the tackle attempts were just What did terrible. you make of Blake Taft's defence? Not that good. Because I'm, I'm just looking at the stats. Have a guess what his tackle efficiency was. <sighs> For reference, obviously it's hard to compare a fullback to anyone else, but the centres, 71% and 90%. I reckon and Taff was like 60. 42. <sighs> he missed more tackles than he made. Like that is just not good enough at all. At all. He like nobody else was below 70. Is it time to get stuck and concerned of our South? Is it oh. And let me make this point. Like, I yeah, know cool, cool, before cool. the podcast, you got to remember when this south side was full, full strength, you know, they're missing Jaira at the moment, who's a big loss, and they're missing Latrell, who, like, biggest loss in the league for a side. Mm. When they were at full strength, they beat the Panthers, they pumped the Broncos, they pumped the Storm. They can beat these sides at full strength mm. with Latrell there. Yeah. So when he comes back, they're not a side I'm riding off. No way in the world you write them off. My and yeah, you, you can't write them off at all. And they are a side that always peak at finals. Like, I wouldn't well. even write them off for top four. Oh yeah, like but no way. But I, and we mentioned this pre-show when we were talking off air. I suppose you'd say my concern is the next month of footy. It's all well and good to be playing good footy at the back end of the year, but y if you lose enough games now, you, you might not be playing for anything. And that's my big concern because of how close the comp is. They're sitting in eighth and they Somehow. play they play the fallen. How when the you look at Rabbitohs, fallen. you're like, how on earth after this season are they in eighth at the moment? And it's literally just because of how close it is. Yeah. Like oh, they're here in eighth, but what are, are they two points outside of the eight? Let's uh, outside of the four, I mean. Let's I think they're little, one. Oh yeah, two on points, 20. yeah, one win. They're two points behind fourth and four points behind first. Which is two wins. Yeah, that's how tight this year is. They're also three points ahead of thirteenth. Yeah. So like they can like if they lose this weekend. Imagine if they drop down there. They can fall. I just know for a fact they're bouncing back. Like they're only two points ahead of the Roosters who are playing really, really bad. And like, Demetrio gives me confidence. Like he knows they're And in yeah, I'm not trying to write yeah. this, I'm not trying to write them off, but my sorry, my point was that the next month of footy very important. Because have they lost the last two now or three even? Four out of five. They've lost like four out of five. And then their next month or three three games at least is Warriors in New Zealand. Tough. And then they play the Bulldogs who you go, oh, like easy win. 
They'll be missing all of their origin players that week. And we saw them against the Dragons with that origin players. Made they a late horrible. surge, but, you know. They were pretty yeah. bad. And they, they're probably going to be missing more in this game than they were then because you talk about Campbell Graham, maybe Cody Kalon Walker. Like, Kalon Matangi. Kalon, yeah, Keon, like, it could be even worse. <laughs> don't. That's scary. Against, I, like, I think the Bulldogs it's are better rubber, than don't the pick Dragons. Him. Dead rubber, don't pick them. <laughs> <Warriors, yeah. laughs> and then who is it they play after? We get the bye round And then 20. the Broncos. Then the Broncos. Then Latrell's due back that game. Yeah. At the sunny coast. So it's a tough month of footy. And if they nervous. lose three games and hypothetically say the this will five be, teams below them win This would be just worse two games, than the Broncos last year. Like if if Manly win two games in the next month, they jump Rabbitohs. Mm. Like it's that close. So they need to pull together some wins over this next month and then set up for their run home. I'm not saying they have to win all these games, but just one or two. If they lose all of these games, oh, I'll, it's, I'll write them off. I yeah, wouldn't write them off, but then it's like, let's start getting yeah, you got to wait for Latrell to come back before we Because like, they can that. go on a run at the end of the year and pull oh, themselves yeah. into the I'm, I'm confident they will as well. I think if they want to make top four, they definitely I'm have confident to win some of these the minimum games. they'll get is pre- preliminary final. Yeah. I think they'll if, get that. If they lose the, those three games we just touched on, they probably can't make top four. Probably not. But they'll probably still make the eight. Because they will, would have lost. Like ten games yeah. or something, but they can still make. They can still miss the eight. They can still make the eight. That's yeah. where they fall. They fall into that group of teams that honestly, I would not want to be in with that group of teams mm. that are pushing for the eight. Because there's a lot of teams that are going to miss out and be like equal eighth. Yeah, so I know. it's coming. The yeah. good thing is, Souths do have pretty good four and against. They do, which will help. Solid. They, we lost a lot of points over the last few weeks. Like they, so. they have better four and against than any team below them. So that, yeah. that helps. That does help. But yeah, are you concerned about your I am pathetic little rabbitos? I am. <laughs> I'm very concerned. Like I'm waiting for Latrell to come back. And if nothing changes when he's back, then I'm done with him. And that, they are relying on Latrell, but when Latrell's there, like they're fine. It's incredible. That's the thing. So they're incre- they are the best team in the league when he's fine. Yeah. As an all round hole. When outside. they when he before he got injured, they were the best informed team yeah. of the cop. Um I'll tell you uh, what you know, I don't know if it saved your weekend, but it made it a little <laughs> made bit better. It made, made me smile on the train ride. The home. Roosters losing to the milk. Yeah. And we both tipped and the, the Roosters. We saw this coming. Yeah, the Roosters were awful. Yeah. That first half especially, just terrible. Teddy or, had a shock. I don't know if I'd say the whole well. first half, but the first 35 minutes especially. Oh, they were just at, terrible. Towards the end of the first half, they put the together. The Roosters fans, you know, Hainsy especially is always like, oh, we're turning it around. This is our alliance. We don't lose there. They have lost their last two there, so you can't <laughs> use that anymore, but. They're just not playing good. Yeah. And, like, I don't know what it is. Like, on paper, we see they got a good side, but they just <laughs> can't seem to get it together. And Their it attack been, is so boring. It would have been so much worse if Manu wasn't even in this game. Like, oh, he yeah. carried them a lot in this game too. He did. Like he scored a double and played really well at centre. And then, yeah, as you said, their attack Teddy, just isn't, Teddy wasn't isn't non-existent. They didn't deserve to score in the first half. They, Joey Manu scored at the end of the half. But the Raiders, as, all, as always, like to fade out of games. And yeah. that's why they're four and against is terrible. They either win close games or get lose yeah. by a large margin. And yeah. they need to fix that. I've ASAP. actually got a stat They need for to you. fix that for and against. I've got some... I, I, let me... I'm going to have to try and remember this because I can't go and find it because I forget where I saw it. Like, it was some random Raiders fan on Twitter but I think it was four times this year they've led by double digits and the biggest win out of those four games guess what the biggest win four, four point two two this was yeah. their biggest win after leading by double digits oh and yeah they all, had the Tigers one yeah they won the other three they won by a field goal yeah the Dolphins they beat by field and yeah. then the, another one as well and they I need think to fix that for it they've against. got eight wins no they've got nine wins now and I think Eight of those wins, they've had like, double-digit This is easily leads. a game they should have ran away with. But no, sorry. Didn't. Hang on. Sorry. The I think the stat was in their eight, in either all their wins or like in eight of them, something like that, their biggest win is eight. Like, to your what point, that they what don't have the when they played the Rapidos? It was 33 to 26. Well, that so would be... I don't, they mustn't have been leading by double digits. Eh? Yeah, maybe not. I'm not sure. I think it was 12-4. Well, that maybe. might be like the one, the one game where it doesn't okay, fall into yeah. that category. But yeah, there was four games where they've had, I think it was 12 nil le- or like 12 point leads and then the biggest win in those games. Yeah. But this two. was such an opportunity for them to get a good for and against <laughs> in this game based off how the Roosters were playing. But they just seem to get lazy towards but the like, end. I don't know if they get tired and or they're lot, just like... I know the t- four and against is a huge talking point and everyone keeps bringing it up. But if you're winning games, yeah, and I think, that's I think what, Raiders can get away with... That's all Ricky Stewart's worried about. Yeah, creeping, just keep yeah, winning. Because they're winning enough that they might yeah, not have to rely on I think they play finals? I think they probably do, yeah. 
I don't think they will. I'm going too deep in. Mm. It is interesting though. It's like you look at the teams that might creep in, Titans, Cowboys, Dolphins. Oh, yeah, Cowboys, you know. And it's like teams do have to drop out. And at the moment, the bottom three of the eight are Raiders, Eels, Rabbits. And I don't see Eels dropping out. The next month, would like as it stands, I don't see Rabbits dropping out. And it's like well, Raiders, it's it's very hard to pick. It's so close. I want to look year. at their draw, actually. Who Raiders? Yeah. I know they have to play us in Canberra, so that's one loss. Right. I know they play Gold Coast in Canberra this week, so you'd say, oh, do they win? You, surely. Gold Coast play like they did last week, you know. They played Dragons here. They, they, not this week, the week after. So they got the... the what, are you, what are you doing that night, Zane? What are you doing the what night before f- the Rabbits-Bulldogs game? Should we go to that one? Possibly, actually. Yeah, it's Friday night. Because mm-hmm. I like the milk. Yeah. And I, it's like 8 p.m. Friday, so I should be able to get yeah, to it. Yeah, I might, may as well go. Round 20, I got the bye, then I got Warriors over there. Newcastle, ta- Newcastle Tigers, Storm, who they always seem to be. Yeah, <laughs> Dogs, Broncos. They've got a fairly that's easy a, draw. That's like, all right. Like, you know, they're all winnable games for them. Like, they probably do play finals, to be honest. That's an all right draw. How I many think, buys are that? I think they've had two already. Two. I think they've got one more. One to go. Yeah, that sounds right. I think it's round 21 they got the buy. I don't mind that, that run home. Yeah, but they're just, I don't think they go too far. Yeah, I don't... Th- you know, Jackie Wyden's yeah. on his way out as well. So, you know, they might want to be successful mm. just for him yeah like, i don't see him going deep into the finals but i think they can play finals yeah mm. yeah depends if they get a home final then i think they can win the first i like they're the, like they won in melbourne last year i was, I was talking about it, it with coming. one of my teachers who's very into footy yeah. the other day how he reckons it can pan out he reckons mm. warriors eighth mm. cronulla seventh Parramatta sixth um Wait, did I say Warriors 8th? Yeah. You said Raiders 8th, sorry. Raiders 8th. Um, Warriors 5th. Sharks 7th, Eels 6th, Ra- Warriors 5th, South 4th, yeah. yeah. then Storm, Broncos, Panthers. That's pretty legit. Then the grand final Storm, Rabbits, mm-hmm. he reckons. But this was last week pretty before legit. that, yeah. last weekend. So Pretty legit. Yeah. I, oh. And he reckons Panthers, Rabbits will play each other in the semis, but not in the grand final. Yeah, so right. That obviously means South gets over him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be um, – like, it's just such a good comp this year. It yeah, literally might the be best, one of the best ever. Yeah, uh, 2018, you know, it was very mm. close. You know, it was two points between first and eighth that year. So, yeah. But this is just really exciting. Yeah, no, I'm enjoying it. Even, like, as a Bulldogs fan. Who, Even as a Rabbits fan, you know, terrible. where it just screws us over. Mm. <laughs> All these – I like find it so him. funny. Like I remember a couple of weeks ago, you were talking about like how nervous you were for finals already, and now it's like, oh, we even why not even make it? Because yeah. <laughs> that's just how good the comp is this year. But uh, South like, should I'm be pretty, sweet. You're pretty certain they South will sweet. definitely scoop in there somehow. Yeah, and Bulldogs obviously as well. I'll, 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 I'll be so disappointed run. if South miss it. Yeah, it, so it, like, it's just going to be so. I just want to like watch. All the games for the rest of the year, like right now. Yeah. I just so want to see I what just, happens. I just want to know what wish happens. Wish I had a time machine. Yeah. Imagine if I did and I'd go back and make my tips. I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> millionaire. Back to the future twos oh, kind yeah. of stuff, mate. Um, you wonder that, how I predict my grand final. So pre Oh, so. there we go. We found out Zane's yeah. actually a time traveler. <laughs> Zane's been watching too much Back to the Future. As we said, our players of the week, I had Scotty Drinkwater, you had Dallin. And the most disappointing, who'd you end up going with? Rav. Who'd you have most? I said Blake Taff. Oh, that's right. You had yeah. Taff and I had Cody Walker. Yeah. So there you go. Um, three questions this week. We don't. I, th- you think I have one, but we kind of touched on it. I worry yeah. it's premiership contenders. Yeah. I'm going to go, honestly, that home final week one. Wow. Mm. If they can get a home final week one, yes. And if they can finish top four in fourth and get mm. a win the first week. Yeah. I just don't think <laughs> they can win in like a big game in Sydney. Like I just if, like I don't see them beating they Panthers got, at Penrith. No, I, yeah, I just can't see them. I just can't see them beating like South at Ackle, Penrith just at Ackle, Storm in Melbourne. Brisbane in Brisbane. Like yeah. I just can't see it happening. Like I know they beat Brisbane in Mel- yeah, um, Melbourne, in Melbourne <laughs> once. Brisbane and Melbourne. Like, I just can't see them winning It'll those be massive games. Yeah. Next one, uh, Eels contenders. We'll go for a more well, now. We, we spoke about we, that. So I feel can, like we've talked about everyone yeah. already. What about Cowboys? Nah, not contenders. Not contenders. I think they are, but I'm just you know. Coming off watching yeah. them live, so yeah, you're just upset. So I'll dreadful. tell you what, Zane. Not everyone can be at the Cowboys at Aqua Stadium, no, can they? Can it's they. not that hard. It's not, just have Matt Burton, then it's all good. Just have Josh <laughs> Reynolds return after six <laughs> odd years, and then it's literally as simple as that. Josh had a car, who I believe I'll call it now. I reckon he plays for South when his contract runs Ooh. up at the Dogs. You reckon he's going to go to the? I bunnies. reckon for sure he. he so yes, I, I just reckon him, him, him and Latrell have got to unite at some point. They unite for New South Wales. They do. If Latrell wasn't a cat and actually played, if he wasn't <laughs> beefing with Brad Filler, 
They played for Australia together. Yeah, I just reckon we're some no. like we're eventually going to see him unite. I reckon he's, a, I reckon he's a bulldog for life. To you be reckon? honest, I don't see him leaving. He said that about Melbourne as well. How old is he? He'd be twenty eight or maybe twenty seven. I reckon he's twenty nine. You reckon he's that old? Mm. I don't think he's that old. Maybe he came in a bit later. Oh yeah, no, yeah, twenty seven. Yeah, so yeah, he signed four years with the dogs. So yeah, mm. he's two years in now. So yeah, I just want to see fifty in the house. Like, yeah, no, again. I don't see him leaving. To be honest, he said he that does, about Melbourne. Too, he said he's a storm for life. So. Yeah, that, that's what he said. I'm like, I just he I don't, he, he's too said. valuable to us off field. Yeah, like we'll we'll pay him overs just because of what he does off field. Yeah, I think he's too valuable. But I just would love to see Latrell yeah. and Arakai like and like United want. It's, and it's similar Wyden to Messi and, and Ronaldo. <laughs> Messi and Ronaldo. Yeah, Messi and Ronaldo. <laughs> like it'd be awesome to see him unite. Troll yeah. and Adokar would be awesome. And Jack Wyden. Yeah. And Cody Which Walker. Like, it won't and le- with literally Wyden. every Indigenous player. Alex Nico, Johnson. Nico, Nico Hines as Nico well. Hines. Yeah. Every Indigenous just, player there is. Is, is Reese Robson Indigenous? <laughs> Probably. I don't know. Now let me find it. I feel like I'm trying to think of an Indigenous hooker. Is there an Indigenous hooker? Um, I swear, did he play in All-Stars? Reece, I don't uh, think he's Robson. Indigenous, is he? Cheese is like... Maori indigenous, does that count? <laughs> and Nor- Norwegian. Yeah, yeah. So Reese Robson. Reese Robson. <laughs> so just make the indigenous I'll give you a tip. You move Cook to centre and just put <laughs> Reese Robson in a hooker and have an indigenous spine. <laughs> oh, gosh. Let's see what happened the other day. What? With Mundine saying he'd love to coach yeah. <laughs> What a dick. Uh. I'm sorry. Why would we? And I saw some comments saying if that happened... It would just Origin would just become Queensland versus the Indigenous All Stars. Yeah, it really would. That'd be a good it? game. It really yeah, would. That. It wouldn't. But have. then Cook would have to give up his centre. He would have to, but you know, Mundine does what Mundine loves to do and oh, just shit out to Mundine. Oh, God, Please. obviously, before we get into um, the bit that everyone comes to the podcast to watch, which is our predictions, which actually. Before I give a shout out to Picklebet, I won last week. You did. I won yeah. by one point nine to eight, and the total leaderboard, including um, Origin Two, which I also won. The comeback's on. It's now fourteen Is there to time? five. You can still take me over, can it's you? It's fourteen to five, so I'm down by nine. I don't think you can There's lose time. another week. I think That's... I can afford to lose one, maybe. What week is it this week? Eight, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and then Origin Three. That's eleven. And I'm down by nine, so I can afford to drop, uh, afford to drop a couple. Yeah. That's not over. The fat lady I need to is stay not singing. My game. I need to stay you've, up on my game. You've yeah. lost South are falling two or three down. I'm falling down. Yeah. It's not looking good at the moment, is it? I'll tell you what. Yeah, no, it was like it was close this week. There was actually two games where we both got like none. Like it wasn't that I just did amazing. You just did bad, Zane. Straight up, you just yeah. you didn't do because I'd never do good, but you normally do do good, but not this week. Yeah. Um, let's as I was. In the middle of doing, let's give a shout out to Picklebet. Um, if you're going to have a bet, do it with Picklebet. Just don't get on our multis because we yeah. suck at betting. Yeah, you wouldn't want to. What code are they using this when they code sign hot up? Code Hotdog, as always. Code Hotdog. You hot should know that by now, you unless you're new. Now, keep in mind that we do put together some pretty garbage multis. <laughs> you can make your own multi on Picklebet. I can't express that enough. I'm getting DMs telling us how bad our bets are. What people DMing me. Um, so it's pretty bad. I've actually, somebody gave me the idea that we should do like fan multis. And like the people watching, want. they submit a multi and we like put it up. Yeah, that's fair. So if you're watching on YouTube or if you're on Spotify, go to the YouTube and comment your multi. How does that sound? And we'll Sounds pick, good. We'll pick one of them or we'll post it on our Instagram and you can have your multi Or featured. even like if you see us on TikTok, leave them in yeah, your TikTok or, comments. Or, like, or DM like, us. I do read my comments. I don't write, respond to yeah, most of them, but, but I read do them. read most of and them. And then yeah. um, what do I say? And then, yeah, on Instagram as well, DM us. Your multi, and we'll pick a multi each week, and you get a shout out. I guess we'll, yeah. we'll give you a shout out. And if your bet does better than ours, I'll tell you. Actually, let's make it interesting. We're talking about the the leaderboard. If your multi gets up, we'll give you the points for that week. Really? Okay. We'll give them the. We'll okay. give them double points for that week to give them a chance to catch up. So we're gonna have me, Zane, and then we'll just have like audience. Yeah. Okay. And then if the audience win at the end of the year, we quit. We quit. Because <laughs> we suck too <laughs> yeah, much. Okay, yeah. I agree. <laughs> um, but yeah, as, as we said, code hot dogs, sign up, make your own multi because our bets suck. Always gamble responsibly. Chances are your bets lose. If you're having trouble, call 1-800-858-858 for help. This week, Zane, it starts with a local derby. And this is where my multi of the week is coming from. I there saw a stat where I think last 14 <laughs> games in a row, Renato Molotalo has scored 
And uh, this just shark this is Sharks Dragons, by the way. If yeah. you don't know what the local derby is, yeah. So Radau Mulatala scores every time he plays at points bet. You know, if the Dragons wingers defend like they did last week, he will score a few tries. So I'm tipping Sharks 13 plus and Ronaldo Mulatalo. Is he the same wing as Dallin was? No. No, he's he, the other one. Yeah, he'll be on Ravalara's side. Be on Sharks 13 plus? Yes. And Ronaldo. How, are you, you going to spice it up for the multi of the week and go like him to score a couple? Two, two or more. Two or more? I'm going... I just cannot see a world where the Dragons win this game. Yeah. Can you? I'm looking at the odds, courtesy of Picklebit, obviously. No, I wouldn't get odds from anywhere else. Dragon 670. Oh, and Sharks really? like I don't think they'd be that far like outside. Huge outsiders. Like it's a local derby, so yeah. you know, they could be up for it. But yeah, I just, there's outsiders. no way in the world I consider Dragons. Huge outsiders. But Sorry, I'm also, they're not a top eight team, so Sharks should win. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also no. on Sharks 13 plus, And I'm on Katara. I'm going to go the other winger. Yeah. I think the, the wingers Dallin will have a field it. night here. Yeah. Um, High wa- scoring as well. And I then reckon. speaking of Dallin, the Warriors taking on the Bunnies over in New Zealand. What's your pick for this one? This is tough for you. I'm going to do it. First time this year, I'm tipping against the Bunnies. I'm tipping wow. the Warriors. I think there's a huge buzz in New Zealand at the moment. This game's a sellout. There's a lot of hype around the Warriors. Their fans are going to be there. They're going to be loud AF. South should bounce back, so I'm going to say 1 to 12. But I think the Warriors get the job done here. There you go. An eight-time try scorer. He's been flying recently. SJ. SJ. He's got to score in front of that big crowd, I think. He's been I think he's going to break the line through lazy Cody Walker defence. <laughs> Steph Blake Taff score, score under the post. Is that how you see it going? I, I'm i going south. <laughs> you are? I like. I and love... Every time I tip against south, they win. There you so, go. You know, I'm just trying to be... I, <laughs> I'm, I lo- like I'm loving what the Warriors are doing, and I'm like I'm, I'm, I was all actually I was so close to going Warriors, and I was close to going Sean Johnson as well. But gut instinct, I think South's going to get a much needed win. That's just yeah. gut instinct. I th- honestly, in my head, I'm thinking Warriors. Yeah. But gut, I'm thinking South. And who's scoring? And I'm going AJ just to be okay. super safe. Yeah. To be super safe. Well, I'm is he a AJ. safe option anymore? <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, Warriors wing defence do worry me Their yeah. edge defence But you know With Mitchell was there I'd probably tip oh, South 13 plus in this but Yeah I'm, I'm just going off gut there I think Warriors win But I'm going to go gut instinct Just say South Try and back. pull one over you as well I'm going South Now Storm and Panthers in Melbourne Who do you reckon the favourites are in this This is one? at Marvel Stadium as well So I wonder Who do you reckon favourites are I think Melbourne, Melbourne yeah, are Storm Yeah Storm are favourites I think Who that's purely because it's in Melbourne I love, yeah, Marvel. You said I Marvel. love Marvel Stadium. Like, I hope it's rain so they can shut the roof. Just yeah. Because I think it'd be cool. But yeah. I, I believe the Women's World Cup starting up. So that's why all these yeah. games are getting moved out. So this is going to be a good game, this. This will be an absolute cracker. I mean, I'll, I'll go Penrith. Yeah. Although, like, Melbourne can definitely win this. Melbourne are very flying under the radar a lot at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Big time. They're in Eels. Yes. Yeah. So I'll say, well, I'll say Penrith win. One to twelve. Yeah, then I think Critter might score probably. Yeah, I'll Critter. go one to twelve. I can't say thirteen plus. No go way. Go thirteen plus. I mean, Storm always have that game every once in a while where they do get lose thirteen plus. You know what? I'll say Penrith thirteen plus. There you go. And you on Critter? Mm. I'm going Panthers one to twelve, which is why I tricked you into going thirteen plus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm going the other head gear hero, Brian Toto. He, not I, nearly, I nearly went him. I nearly went to O, but I reckon Critter gets over. Do you reckon Luai's going to play this game or is he going to be too busy waking up in the morning and going to work? What <laughs> oh, do yeah. you think? He's going to receive a reception down there. Oh, 100%. Without a doubt. All those idiots down there yeah. give him a reception. I don't know if there'll be a crowd because everyone's got work in the morning. That's yeah, the only thing. True. Um, Raiders Titans in Canberra. High scoring game, I reckon. Yeah? High scoring. Um. Uh, I don't know. So are we going to be Titans win by a lot or Raiders win in a close yeah, one? Yeah, that's what I think as well. I might say Titans in a yeah. margin of like 12, like 36-24, like something like that. Yeah, big one. Like I think it will be tight then they'll just so run you got away 1 to 12 it. but tight. Yeah, and I think I like Brumo scoring. <clears throat> you know, with Reese Walsh out of origin now, he could be playing I for a I think he'll spot. be full back. You reckon he'll be? I think he'll, Pong we'll, not going to be Obviously we'll talk about it in our yeah. origin preview. Oh, well, we'll know the teams by then. But yeah, I think because Ponga withdrew himself. Yeah. So I think Brumo gets yeah. it. So yeah, he was I think he's going to be playing for a spot. Because think... everyone's like, oh, it's Ponga now. Nah, he he with he literally withdrew himself from Origin. Yeah. Everyone's just forgotten about that. And Brumo was 18th man, so I think Brumo goes in. You could always push like Hamar to fullback, yeah, but I think leave him center Brumo. I think another name rumored to get fullback is Lindsay Collins. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> you can outleap other fullbacks, yeah, so <laughs> why not? Um, I'm play going... Cook at centre, you can play Collins at fullback, so... <laughs> at centre? Well, I mean, you can play Cook at centre, you can play anyone at centre. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to see a counter on this episode, how many times we've talked about Cook as a centre. Yeah. <laughs> um, in the raiders Titans game, I'm going Raiders 1-12 to and I'm going Rapana to score a yeah. try, Rapana. Yeah. Just sort of safe, just some, something yeah, easy. Yeah, that's a tough game. Now, this one, this is interesting. Cowboys, Tigers. The Tigers towed them up a couple of weeks yeah, ago. Like not even a month ago. Again. Cowboys will win 13 plus. Cowboys are a massive favourite. Is this, and is this in Queensland? Yeah. And Murray Tulungi, I reckon, scores. He's he's so underrated, Murray Tulungi. Like obviously, he's playing Origin stuff. But I feel like he's still underrated. Yeah, I think he's underrated as well. So you're going Tulungi. I'm actually going to go Cowboys 13 plus as well because it's in Queensland. I would I would have gone 1 to 12. It's so hard to tip against the Tigers in this one because, like, how much they've had up. But they're a different side without Brooks and hmm. um, Appy. But, yeah, I'm going Cowboys and I'm going to go 13 plus because it's in Queensland. It's also the same game that the Tigers got robbed in oh, last yeah. year because it's back up there. And I'm going Holmes revenge match against mm, Holmes. Uh, against our tower. Good, good choice. Um, Broncos, Dolphins. Surely not. The Brisbane, Brisbane, Brisbane Derby. If Brisbane lose this game, the downfall is happening again. Yeah, I like they, if they miss the, If they lose this game, I reckon they're going to miss the eight. Honestly, because you look at how tight it is. If they lose this game, they're going to drop similar position to South. I'm just, I'm just, I want to have a look now. Because oh, yeah, cause they're only two. Well, they're two wins ahead, but I, yeah, you're not right. No, I'm telling you, no, if they right. can't win this game against the way well, the Dolphins. Sharks, Warriors and Raiders all win. Okay, no, Bennett's obviously going to get the Dolphins fired up for this one mm. after weeks of Lots being dreadful. Of and, you know, Battle of Brisbane. Like, I can see a world where Dolphins win this. But you just You're can't not going Dolphins? Them. No way you can tip <laughs> them, though, against Broncos. They got up for it last time. Yeah, and Bronc- but they were in better form at mm. that point. Yeah. You know, Broncos are disappointed with that loss. And, you know, Walsh is out. Yeah. Who's going to play fullback, actually? That's a great That's, question. Is Cobo going back there? Because they named Walsh, so we don't know. Um, and they're bringing Arthur's yeah, in? Yeah, Cobo, or? I guess, maybe. Big chance it's Cobo. Like oh no, they got Tristan Saylor there oh, who Tristan did Saylor. good against Warriors. Maybe he just comes in. I reckon. Oh, yeah, you've got to tip Broncos 13 plus. Yeah, wow. Like surely. There's no plus. way you can see the I can see the Dolphins winning this. Who's your try scorer? It's not Reese Walsh. I think I like Reynolds actually. Yeah. Let's go Adam Reynolds. <laughs> My try scorer is also Adam Reynolds. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going Broncos one to twelve. Yeah. I'm going one to twelve. Just because this I is feel a like big Dolphins get both clubs as well. Um now, game of the week. God, is it? Bulldogs <laughs> Knights. I'm going to give you a bit of a fun fact here. What's the score predict? I reckon like 4-2. The Bulldogs and Knights, since round 12, have the two lowest yeah, that's what I said. It's the points in the like game. Yeah. Or something. Might be 4-2. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is interesting because I feel like I based reckon. off memory in history, it's very 50-50 between us and Knights. Um, Knights. Uh, they they grind know. games. This is probably going to be the most boring game of the year. I think it could almost. I think it could be, be really there. exciting. You're going to be there. Yeah, because so I, I think it's going to be tight as. Yeah, God, I'll say I'll go Knights, but just yeah, dogs home game they could win. But any time try score, do I even choose one? <laughs> Is anyone going to score against? <laughs> you can if you want. You can go no try scorers. Are you going one to twelve? Ado car, but I'm tipping the Knights. Too. I assume you're going one to twelve. Yeah, one to twelve. <laughs> I know. Literally two seconds ago, I said I think this is going to be close, but I'm a doggy starting pass. Obviously. <laughs> Doggies win and they win big. And my anytime try scorer is Jacob Karaz. Yeah. And this is my multi of the week. Oh, like I reckon out of cards. This is multi of the week. Karaz two or more. Okay. It worked for me against the Storm. If you if you're an OG listener, you know that I called Doggies thirteen plus <laughs> Karaz two or more. That, that was well. the greatest day of my life. <laughs> and then in this game, I'm going the same thing. Apparently, you on I th- I'm Fox. I think can score as well. Mm. Yeah, it'll be interesting if it's yeah. either high scoring I'm, or low scoring. This isn't going to be an interesting game. I'm sorry, but I, I think, don't know if I'm going to watch. I don't mean it's going to be the games. In here. I think it's going to be interesting whether it's going to be low scoring or high scoring. I'm going to watch it know. for about 10 minutes. Then if there hasn't been a try score, I'm going to be like, nah, I'm not, not into this at all. This is going to be, game. I'm going to call it now, game of the week. And it's going to be decided in Golden Point. You reckon? And we're going to, I, I know I'm I literally, I'm going to have to, I'm changing. I'm going doggies 1 to 12. I have to, because I'm talking about how close it's going to be. Doggies 1 to 12. And Matt Burden. Is not going to kick the field goal an extra time. Who? Khalid Rajab. Oh. Field goal. That guy that in debuted. Extra time. In. The guy that yeah. debuted the other week. He's going to kick the field wow, goal. That would be To win the game in Golden Point. 
You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it'll be funny when we lose 13+. plus. Last game of the week. This one's surprising me as well in terms of who's favourites. Manly and Roosters, who mm, reckon favourites? This favorites? is a big game for both. Roosters are favourites, aren't they? Manly. Manly are. Manly are favourites. Yeah, that's, why not? Yeah, fair. I just don't rate Manly without Turbo. I just don't. Think, it's their home game, though. Yeah, that's why I think they're favourites. But I think, like, I'm tipping Manly. Yeah? I think they get the job done here. 1-12. to 12. Try This scorer? again. Oh. I'm trying to think of a try. I'm on Roosters 1-12. to Garrick, 12. Ruben Garrick. Garrick? Yeah. Oh, you know what? That's a good idea. Maybe I've got Manly try scorer because I'm on a Roosters 1-12. to 12. Like, who scores the try? I reckon it's going to be a similar score to like last week, 20 to 18, something like that. Garrick, I like. Is he fullback? Yeah. Hang on, I just want to have a look at the I think he list. is. I think he is as well. It might be weak. You yeah, know, Garrick is and then Saab, Tui Pilotu. I'm going to go... Oh, Ooh, Tui Pilotu sounds... I'm, I'm going to go... Oh, this is too hard, man. Give me Ola Kawatu, actually. Okay, yeah. Give me Ola Kawatu. I just don't. And, you know, Nat Butcher's out as well. That's a big loss for the Roosters. Yeah. He's been very good for him recently. And they've got that white dude. Second row and Victor Radley's second row as well. <laughs> that white dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. Oh, my bad. Uh, no, no. And they, well, I feel like I'm going to offend him more than... Suawi <laughs> Wong. I can't pronounce yeah. his name. Yeah, yeah, I've had him in my fantasy yeah, side. Suawi There's Wong, big yep. raps around him. I know Guru had a big wrap around there him you go. as well. So. Kid could be anything. He's massive as well, apparently, this guy. Yeah, right. Um, I guess that'll do us, eh? Yeah. That'll do us. Your multi, your multi of the week was it's Sharks. Mulatalo, two or more. And my multi of the week was Dogs 1 to 12, I changed to, and Karaz, two or more. And our try scorer multi is something we need to put together. What do you reckon? Mm, let's go. Let's go with five eighths. Five eighths? Yeah. Let's yep. say. Let's say Luai. Luai? I was going to say Munster. Let's go both Luai and Munster. In the same game? I reckon Luai scores in this game. Luai, Munster. And who's another one that would be... Hang on, let me just... Let me cook for a second. I just want to see what... What day, though, that game That's a Friday night. Is that Friday night? Yeah. The 8 o'clock game. Yeah, and yours is Thursday. Let's go... Let's try and go someone else on Friday night. Sean Johnson's half back, damn it. Oh, Cody Walker. Cody Walker. All right, bang. Scores. We're calling it Five Eighth Friday. Yeah, Five Eighth Friday. Luai Munster and Walker. I like it. I'm probably not going to be watching too much of the Friday night games. But I'll, be... I'll be watching the South one, like here and there. I'll have oh, it I was going to say, why wouldn't you watch them? Because I'm at a oh yeah, game, that's so, right. Yeah, you know, I'll try to watch, but probably the Storm and Panthers game. Prob definitely not because yeah. we're off to the beach. <laughs> I'm giving you an insight to my private life, aren't I? Ladies and gentlemen, if you're but in Wollongong, game... Zane is going to be at one of the beaches on Friday night. I am. I'm going to take a wild guess and I'm going to say Ferry Meadow Beach? No. Winuna yeah. Beach? Yeah. Not Winuna yeah, Beach. Yeah. <laughs> Not Winuna Beach. <laughs> Is it Winuna Beach? Yeah. 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 It's like I don't want to say. If you go to a beach in Wollongong, maybe one of the ones that starts with W and ends in A, yeah. you might see Zane there on Friday night. Mm. So just do with that information <laughs> what you will. Um, but that'll do us. It will. So Let's trot, baby. Till next week. Let's trot.